Tickwitz here, here to do a follow-up video for my Surface Pro 4 screen flickering video. So, in that video, I helped out a few people with finding out that it was their display driver that was affecting their screen flickering. And so we went through a process of where we would remove the display driver, go through the Surface Pro 4 soft reboot, and get it restored. So this worked with a few people, but then another few saw that the screen flickering was so bad that it was not fixed by that. And Microsoft realized that and says that there are some that are experiencing a screen flicker that cannot be addressed with a firmware or driver update. So for that reason, they are offering a free replacement for your Surface Pro 4 that's exhibiting this issue. However, if you've done this replacement thing before, you know that there are a series of steps that one has to go through in order to receive this. And it's not as easy as taking your Surface, putting it in a box, shipping it to Microsoft, and then getting a new one. So let's go through this process together. So I've called up Microsoft as well as I'm using this page. And from that information, we're going to go through this process. So let's begin. So first thing that everyone needs to have is an el eligible Surface Pro 4 device up to three years from the date purchased. So we'll go into what eligible means later, but Surface Pro 4 device bought within three years ago. So some people are trying to scramble for the receipt finding, man, I bought this, when did I buy this? Well, don't worry. The Surface Pro 4 was released on October 26, 2015. It is now May 12th, 2018. It has not been three years. So, however, if you're watching this video in October, then I would definitely look for your receipt, see when you bought it. But as of May 12th, everyone should be good to go. So, after you find out that your Surface Pro is good to, good to go, that it's within three years, then let's go to the replacement process. So on that note, they're going to tell you to ensure that your service and device has been updated with all the Surface and Windows updates. So this is tedious, especially if you turned it off going through the command prop issue. But most people have it relatively up to date. So I would first update it. But you're going to be asking like, TechRich, do I really have to do this? And you do because the second part of the repair process. This is where you actually have to talk to Microsoft support. Now it says Microsoft support right there, but that's not the issue. That's not the real person you have to contact. You actually have to contact Surface support. So you, so if you're going online, you're going to type in Microsoft Surface support, and then you're going to speak to a technical representative. If you're doing it by the phone, you're going to first have to call up Microsoft support then say, hey, may I be forwarded to Surface Support? From there, they're going to be able to help you. So when you're contacting them, this should be 30 minute to an hour and 30 minute conversation. It could take longer or it could take shorter. But basically what they're going to do is they're going to give you a series of processes. Have you updated? Have you done CFC scan now? They'll probably do that. They'll probably say, hey, have you uninstalled and reinstalled your display driver? Stuff like that. And you know, you've probably done through all this all this process. Your screen flickering is unbearable, unbearable right now. You, you know exactly. So just be patient with them because they don't know exactly what you, you know. And so after that, if you're doing it by the phone, you're just going to tell, you're going to go through the process, tell them, hey, this isn't working. This didn't work. If you're doing it via online, they're probably going to make you download a log me and Hamachi client of where you could, or Hamachi pro, um, product, not log me and Hamachi, but basically you're going to have that downloaded and they're going to control your computer. They're going to go in, they're going to move around and everything, but they're going to come to the conclusion, which you already realized it can't be fixed by just simple software. So once they realize it, they're going to say, now you need to prepare your surface for service. You can go to that web page, but here's the synopsis. Basically, back up all your information. Easy as that. 
Uh, most of the Windows apps you don't need to back up. Like your mail app, they'll they'll sync when you if you have a Microsoft account. But you know, and then after you need to strip your surface down to bare bones. I'm talking no SD card inside the slot, uh, n no USB inside there inside the port, no pin. Make sure you don't even have the uh, case on it. If you have a t um, case on it, type cover, remove it because you're shipping this and you won't see your Surface device again. That Surface, de that they're not gonna take it apart and put it back together and give it back to you. They're gonna probably be sending you a refurbished one. So you won't receive anything on your Surface from that point. So bare bones. I don't want to see a charger being sent because they won't they won't they'll, they won't send it back to you probably they might be nice but they're just expecting a bare bones surface so if you need to back up your computer uh you you can obviously if you have an external hard drive you just go into the windows restore and you back it up to there that's an entirely other video but we're just going to go with what the process is right now so after that you're gonna put it in a box, you're gonna ship it to them. Sadly, when I was on the phone, they, they kinda of indicated that you can't take it to the Windows Store. So if you have a Windows Store near you, you might wanna check that out. But from what I was seeing is that you can't actually take it to the Windows Store, you're gonna to have to ship it directly to Microsoft. And then Microsoft within five to eight business days, which basically this means a week minimum, but you're looking more towards two, two and a half weeks uh so once you get that back you will receive once you wait that period you will receive a refurbished surface and so on that note if you desperately need a computer and your surface is your only device i would recommend picking up a new one new one bringing out that old computer that you have laying around or just getting a cheap computer at a pawn shop, whatever you need to do to get by. Some, heck, phones are very good as a secondary computer if you need it. But if you need the computer, you're gonna be without a Surface for two weeks, probably. So, this seems very easy, but what are the catches? Because we all know that there are a few catches with a replacement thing. So, the good thing is that no matter what type of Surface 4, you're good to go. So if it's an M processor or an i7, you're good to go. It's for both consumers and commercial customers, but here's where the big catch is, is that you can only use the products sold and licensed by Microsoft. I don't know if you bought it on eBay that it's acceptable. It could be because someone might've bought it from Microsoft and then sold it on eBay but you might want to check that up. But if you bought it by Best Buy or Microsoft Store or Target or anything like that, you should be good to go. So any um, external causes such as dropping it and then it starts to flicker, or sadly, if you did do the freezer trick and there was water stuck in there because you didn't wrap it up, that could possibly cause an issue. But the only way you'll find out is if you actually ship it to them. And also, this, this should be relevant for everyone, but any repair that's done by a non-Microsoft uh, person or Microsoft endorsed person, because the reason why it's irrelevant is taking apart the surface is, is almost impossible with all the stuff you have to go with it. And Microsoft doesn't even do that when they ship it back. They even know how tedious it is. So that's why they're giving you a refurbished one and then your computer's go, probably going to be taken apart, put in new things, and then shipped back to another person after they get the main issue fixed, which we don't know what the main issue is because all they've given us is that it cannot be fixed through software, that it's a hardware issue, but we don't know what type of hardware. So, and so if anyone does know that, feel free to leave it in the comments. But, so, lastly, what would I recommend before you do you send it off? So when you have your surface bare bones, I would recommend taking pictures, seeing where the scratches are on your computer, if you have any, if it's completely flawless, definitely take pictures of it. Because when you receive a refurbished device, 
it will not be looking like new. Sometimes it won't have any scratches. Sometimes there will be scratches because it's a defined quality standard that Microsoft has left fairly broad. Now, I believe scratches on the screen are not being in that defined quality standard. So, make sure you take pictures of it. And these pictures will later help if you receive your refurbished device and it has scratches all over the place. You can contact Microsoft, and Microsoft is definitely willing to help out with this. And say, hey, this is not the product I was expecting. Uh, can, we, can we try this process again? If you're willing to wait a little while, they'll give you another one. And you might have to do this one, two, three times maybe, as I've seen from Reddit. But it's definitely worth it to get the service that you deserve, that you paid for all those years ago, to have a finally good device. Lastly, what I find that really shows that Microsoft is willing to help out anyone is that customers who have already paid for this fix out of warranty, because most, most Surface Pro 4s are out of warranty, if you pay for it, you will now get the money back. All you have to do is contact customer service. So the people that were like, this is unbearable, I'm dropping the 250 or whatever it cost to get it replaced then definitely call them up and get your money back because that was definitely a very expensive process to get your service fixed. So on that note, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I very, I very much love doing this, but I have to do this one feel that everyone does at the end of their video, but I want to make it a little bit more personal. So like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But the reason why subscribing really helps me is that as of February, I was dropped as a YouTube partner. I have enough vid video views to be a YouTube partner and pass that. However, I don't have the subscribers because when I'm seeing a tech video, I see, oh man, this really helped me out. And then I do the process and then I forget about the video entirely. I know a lot of my pe of people who watch my videos do that. But if you could subscribe, it would really help because I'm at 300 and I need to be at a thousand to become a YouTube partner. YouTube partners allow me to do a lot more. Like for example, I can remove this advertisement right here that Debut Professional does that says, hey, this is a free software. I'm able to get that removed so I can give you guys better quality content. I'm able to, you know, have an, more of an incentive than just purely to help you guys out with it. And liking and disliking my video, both of those really help out because the likes help because I realized, hey, this is actually helping people. Like this last video, I saw that actually, you know, this was a hardware issue for some people, but it was a software issue for other people because they liked the video. It's who that must, and some people in the comments said, hey, this actually worked or this kind of worked for me. So I was able to give a little bit of a solution before this new one came in. The dislikes said, hey, actually, Richard, you're kind of mess messing up. You're not doing the right process and so from there I was able to see okay well let me explore this issue and so I kept on exploring it and then I finally found out today that hey Microsoft is accepting a new way of doing it so from there I'm able to make these videos so thank you so very much for watching this video I hope you guys have a great rest of your day this has been the TechRidge video peace